Hey, hey guys, Yvette here again. Um, we're working on more vintage embellishment and one of my other videos, um, this is tying into it. My workspace is a mess because, hey, I'm an artist and I'm getting messy today. So on my last video, and yes, I'm covered in paint because you're gonna get dirty. If you wanna stay clean, put some gloves on, but we're working with paint. In my last video, I showed you how you can take everyday little kind of junk, objects, tags, whatever, and turn them into um, a vintage uh, embellishment. So using paint, we were using a paint technique. So I want to show you today how to think outside the box when you're think when you're doing your journaling, in particular your vintage journaling. We're always working with papers, we're working with inks, distress inks. I mean, I love my distress inks, but take it to the next level and start adding paint to your paper. Let's just make it even extra special and unique. You know, when you show people your vintage journals, they're gonna be like, ooh la la, how did you do this? So we're gonna work with paint today. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the paints that I'm using. It's the same one I used in my last video. It's um, light flesh. These are all folk, folk art. Uh, I've got vintage white and Victor vintage Victorian, which is a pink. This is a chalk paint. Doesn't really matter if it's chalk or what. Um, and then I've got a champagne gold and a vintage gold. Okay, now I do use more of these ones. So make sure you've got these ones or something similar. You know, just try to stay away from the pure white. You want something that's got um, like that cream kind of undertone. And I just use a little um, paper plate here because after I can just literally throw it in the trash and I don't have less to clean up. And I just get my paint on the plate. I love to use these sea sponges. They're just perfect for kind of stippling and getting the paint on and then I've got just a series of craft paper here and some are just these are just you know strips that I have left over junk pieces um, I'm gonna cut some some of these into smaller pieces because I like to use them both ways and I also like to work small but you can just cut little pieces, have your selection of paper. You can also, you know, tear. Don't be afraid to tear, especially in um, vintage journaling. Have your tears. Keep pieces whole. You can tear after and just get your little pieces of paper out. I am going to just put these aside. And another thing that you might want to have handy is a book, because we're going to use some text. Um, we're going to use that on top of the, the paper. And then another thing I like to use is just a clear plastic bag, because we'll do some, a little bit of a, like a print making technique. Okay, so let's just kind of put all the paper aside. We only need one to work with. Oh, and you can use these little embellishments too. The ones that are already, you know, in your book and you've cut them up and you just want to kind of make them old and yummy. So let's actually start with that while it's there. And I'm sorry, my surface is a disaster, but I put paper down on my table so I can get dirty and I don't have to worry about it. So I've got this little embellishment, it comes in those craft books, I cut it up and I rounded the corner and I'm just going to add a little bit of the, um, oh, what is it, the flesh tone to the corners, just to, you know, like when you're using your distress ink, but you're using paint. And just little dabs here and there just to kind of age it and give it some texture. See that? So because we're using lighter tones, it'll be nice because you can see the design underneath still. But you're just getting a little bit of that layering. And if you want to add a little bit of the white in some areas just to kind of make it pop, just 
I, I don't like to put it all over. I'll just do it in little various areas so that you can still see the layers. Okay, so we can put that aside to dry. And let's grab this butterfly paper. You're gonna have different paper, obviously. And just start kind of stippling the edges. You don't wanna cover the pattern, you know? You just wanna get paint on little areas of your paper, just like that. And you know, I also have, I didn't put any of this gold. If you wanna add a little bit of gold, go ahead, add some gold. Um, but this is something, you know, in my last video, I talked about um, my Tinker Journal because what I like to do is just kind of have a production day where I'm, whoops, my paint separated, where I'm, just doing all my paint and I'm embellishing all my papers and then I'll tuck it away in my Tinker Journal. And then when I do my journaling, I've got all my papers tucked in my little Tinker Journal and I can just start creating the pages of my journal and start making embellishments, you know. So if you wanna learn more about my Tinker Journal, you'll have to, um, go back to my videos where I give um, information and tutorials on it. And if you want to support me over on Patreon for as little as a uh, dollar a month, you can get more um, tutorials at hand on how I do some of my other stuff, how I create the Tinker Journal, and how I embellishment and all that kind of goodies. All those little goodies. Okay, so here I've got a darker paper, and I just, I love this effect. See that? It's just, it adds so much pizzazz to your paper. You know, this one, I'm just going to add a little gold. A little gold, if you've got lighter ones, and a little bit of white, just on top. I mean you're essentially creating your own paper, but you've got that in, you know, um, intricate little design on the bottom. And these like little strips are fabulous because you're gonna use these in your journals for tags or embellishment. So just grab little pieces of paper and start working on it. Look at this, so cool. It's part of this little um, like adventure one that I had and you know like what I like to do is just even tear pieces off like that so that I've got some edges that are just worn down and there's going to be more on top of this we're going to add some inks to some of these papers and others will just you know leave like it you had a book lying on your coffee table back in, you know, the 40s or 50s, and your husband was painting <laughs> the living room, and he splattered paint on your book. Or maybe he was using it um, to protect one of his, you know, collector records. <laughs> and you've got this old book or a page or a map from the 40s and you want to use it in your journal now. I mean, like, you know, add your own little stories. And so this is a more contemporary design. Like, you wouldn't think of using something like this in a vintage, but we're going to change that perception. So with this one, I'm going to cover a little bit more of the design and just little bits just to kind of make it look aged and then we we still see the design underneath and when we go back with the vintage ink it's just going to be like really cool so don't throw your papers away you guys we're gonna like you know all those craft papers you just don't know what to do with it I did a video um if you go back to my youtube video on things to do with old scrapbook paper that you're not using anymore and we did some stamping on it to, you know, repurpose it. So here's just another technique. Instead of doing the stamping, you just add paint. So here's another strip I have. 
I like the butterflies. I'm going to add some gold at the top. Just a little bit here and there. And you just keep working it. This is neat. This is totally vintage. So, you know, typically you go in with your distress oxides and do this around the side. Now, what I want to show you here is this is a technique I did in my last video. Um, where's my book? Where's my book? There's my book page. So we're going to do a little bit of a transfer on this. So I've got the floral. I've got a little bit of paint. I'm going to just um, press a book page down on the wet paint just in the corner. And we're actually just going to let that sit and dry. And then I'll show you like the cool, um, when we start lifting it up, the cool technique that you're going to get. And I'm going to do a little bit over here too, just in the corner. Just let that dry. I'm going to use a little bit of gold in this one. I like the um, brocade kind of fleur de lis kind of design underneath. But see how I've taken a modern paper and I'm totally vintaging up. I would have never just used this paper like this in my vintage journals. But I'm taking it and I'm making it so that I would use it. <laughs> that makes sense. So sometimes you just, you know, need to think outside the box. That's all. Hop over to YouTube and see what everybody else is doing, you know, because there's always something you can do. And I'm going to, with this one, I'm going to add a piece of paper to lift some of that up too. Okay, so let's try now on this one. I'm going to use a plastic bag. This is a printmaking technique. I'm going to take a little bit of my flesh tone and just put some paint on. We're going to lay it on top. Okay. Now, typically in printmaking and when you're doing prints or monoprints, you would just lift the paper up and then you get, you know, your design. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it dry because I want like thicker pieces of that paint to get stuck on. I should have put a little bit more onto um, my paper. So just let that sit again we're just going to put that aside for now and when i lift it up i'll show you what happens so let's do that um i've got some bubble wrap here another little technique let's try it on this with printmaking is um now you would use a roller i'm not using a roller because i don't have one of my dryers out but you can use a palette knife just get some of that paint on your bubble wrap and press down and lift. Okay, press down. You can use it over and over. And then what I would do is just take a little bit and just stipple around kind of where the edges are. You don't want to get rid of all the dots. Okay, and look at how neat. And we're still not done with that, but that's another layer. We're going to set it aside to dry. I'm going to do a couple more like that. I'm going to cut these because I want to do some of these. Oops. 
Okay, so again, a little tag here. I'm just going to literally use the one that I just did. I'm going to press it on top. This is literally just called playing. And look at it. It's just you're getting some texture. You're getting something, you know, old. You're aging that up. And sometimes that's just all you need. This one, I'm going to use a little bit of gold. Just um, when you're working with your paint, just add a little bit at a time because it does, you know, they are acrylics and they do dry fast. So you don't want to waste your paint by putting a ton on there and then you're just, you know not being able to use it because you put too much on there. So I added a little bit of gold. Now I'm just adding a little bit of white on top to make it pop. Okay. And we get our vintaging. Look at that. So easy, you guys. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you get the idea, right? So now you can just go ahead, even on these little tags, like I did a couple here, um, just whatever, and you see that I have different colored papers, but these are gonna be great for tags. Just rough them up, get them all, you know, looking yummy for your, your um, production day working in your vintage journal and just you know get a whole bunch of these done and then go over to my youtube uh, videos to see how you can create a journal if you're interested in finding out more about my tinker journal i'll have a video over there explaining what it is and um you can also go and support me over on patreon for as little as a dollar a month and you'll get more tutorial like in-depth tutorials on how to create my new and improved tinker journal with all the compartments to store all your lovely little embellishments in for your journaling projects so i hope this helped oh wait a minute I forgot to show you. I almost let you guys go without finishing some of the cool yumminess that I was doing over here. So over here on this one, before we leave, um, I put a piece of paper on the wet paint. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to lift the paper off now that it's dry. And you get that wall paper effect, which is so cool. We did this on my last video, but it was on tags. But now you can see how I've done this on paper. Look at that. You do not have to go out and try to find, you know, vintage paper where they've done this for you and you're paying a fortune when you can do it yourself. And I also did it on this, but I don't... Oh, yeah, it is dry already. Look at this. You can do this to any design that you want it is just the coolest thing you are going to love it for your vintage journal you can cut the paper you can rip the paper you've literally resurfaced redone your own paper look at this is the one where i put the plastic bag and when i peel it off that paint it's just like little bits of plastic on it. Okay, and then you can go in if you're like, oh, that's not enough. Just add more, like it's stippling. You can do all these different techniques together and just play and have fun. Look at that. Vintage paper. You can even put lined paper on top. Print stuff off on your um, computer and do transfers. I mean, the possibilities are endless. So is there anything else that I missed here that I was supposed to show you? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, there is one more thing that I do want to uh, show you. Oh, and here too. Okay, so on, I used um, 
uh, what is this called? That you cook with parchment paper. I put some paint paint down on the parchment paper and I added book pages. Now when I pull it off, you get that same wallpaper effect. But it is on the parchment paper. And then you would just go and use like wait, check this out. This is so cool. And you can leave these little pieces on if you want. I just want you to see how I created this paper. So look at this. We have got parchment paper with text on it and paint. And these are amazing for using as embellishments or in your journal. And you just layer and it's see-through. So you can have another piece of paper underneath and you get a little bit of those pops of colors with the texture. So there's just so much yummy goodness. And look at this, I don't throw this out. I use these in my journal. I just, I love it. Uh, okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you on these lighter pieces. Let's get all this out the way. Okay, I need my scrap piece of paper. What we're going to do, so this is a lighter piece where I just had um, a little bit of paint on. So what I'm going to do in this situation is I'll get my Distress Ink out. And where's my trusty sponge for distressing? I was doing a video earlier. There it is. Okay, so I just use sea sponges for everything. All right, and then you can go in and you layer. So you've got your paper, your plain little, like, I use these um, butterflies. I added some paint. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna distress the edges. And this is how I do it. If I want, you know, darker on the edge, I just dip it right in the ink. That's how I roll. Look at this, isn't that cool? And then you can go in, add your distressing on the rest of the paper. I mean, we have just turned something that's new and modern into vintage. Ugh, it's just delicious. Look at that, and it's ready to go. I can tear pieces off, add a little more distress ink in places if I want, but look at the transformation of that. Isn't that delicious? And you would do the same thing. This is still um, wet, but on, for instance, this tag, my intention was I was going to get some distressed ink in there. You just add some layers. And look how quick, make sure I don't get, how quick that is. And you can add more or less ink according to however you want, you know, this to play out. Look at that. Talk about vintage. Okay, you want to add some corners to that. Just clip away. Possibilities are completely and utterly endless. I love this. Look at that. Ta-da! Ta-da! These little tags. Okay, and like I said, you don't have to do this to all of them. You just whatever ones that you choose. We've done so many pieces of paper here. I would probably do like a little bit on here, just these little corners. And then, a 
leave the edge there. So that one, not too, too much, but there it is without, there it is with, and you've got all your yummy goodness for journaling. So I really hope you enjoyed this technique using acrylic paint. You've got some yummy little papers here that you've vintaged up. And um, now you can just get on to work and have some fun. Play. Okay? So thanks for joining me. Come back again. Make sure you check in on me and see what else is happening um, with my embellishments, my tinker journals, and any other um, little techniques that I have for you. I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye.